What's up you guys? Uh, welcome to my channel. My name is Sapphire. Today I'm going to be talking about the Blue Blood palette. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Um, so I actually got this like last week. I did a look with it. So this isn't going to be like a first impressions, just a review on the palette and like of course I'm going to be doing a few looks with it. Um, let me take it out of the box. So first of all, the packaging, of course, we've all seen it. I love it. Very luxurious, fancy. Um, the little clasp is really pretty. Just put it up like that. It is a little snug, so it's a little harder to open, but that's not a big deal. And of course, this is what she looks like. So I think I'm going to be doing three looks with this palette today, and I'm also going to be using Frostitute, which, <laughs> that name, <laughs> I love it. But yeah, so the first look is going to be, like I always do, really toned down, maybe for day-to-day -day wear. So we're going to go from normal to an extra, and I may do a third look, which would be the super extra look. I don't know, I'll decide while I'm filming, but yeah, so I'm gonna go ahead and zoom in and we'll get started on the first look. Um, so let's get started on this first look. I don't know if I'm gonna keep it more neutral, um, cause there are some neutral shades in the palette, as you can see, um, or if maybe I'll keep it neutral and incorporate one of the lighter blue shades. There's not really a plan here. I'm just gonna get into it. I think I'm gonna start with uh, Priceless. So I'm just gonna run that through the crease really quick. That is actually really close to my skin tone, so I may go in with another color. Okay, since Priceless was a little too light, I'm actually, hmm, I think I'm just gonna take Untouchable and see what that looks like in the crease. Oh yeah, you can see this one a little more. So I actually think I'm just gonna run that color um, on the lower lash line as well. Now I'm gonna go in with Celebrity Skin. It's funny, I know Celebrity Skin was like one of the first colors Jeffree ever launched and I don't have that color in my collection. <laughs> so I'm just packing this color on um, the outer half of the crease. I'm going to take that brush from earlier just to buff out the edges as usual. So to deepen it even more, I'm going to take, I was going to take one of the bluer shades, but I think I'm going to take Power, which is this um, gray. I'm going to pack that just on the outer V. Okay, using that brush that has Celebrity Skin on it. And buffing out the edges like you can see it like just blended it right away which is crazy I don't think I've ever used shadows that blend out this easily and I think that could be like a good and a bad thing because if you have a shadow that blends out easily like obviously that's the pro of it is that it blends out easily but I think a con would be that you could just blend the color right away and you'll just be stuck here building and blending and building and blending even longer than normal. I'm going to pick up some more power because I want to keep this look really light. I'm going to try and not get um, too heavy with this color. Going in one more time with Celebrity Skin. Okay, now I'm just going to take Crystal Flesh on my finger, I'm going to tap that all over the lid. Oh my goodness. Now I think I'm going to take power on a little angled brush and I'm going to um, run it right next to the lash line to make like a smoky wing almost. Now I'm going to take um, Cullinan, which is the bright white, and I'm going to pop that on the inner corner. This is a 
And I think I'm gonna take Wealthy, this color here, on my brow bone. So yeah, this is it for the first look. I am unfortunately not gonna put on lashes and mascara since I am planning to do two other looks and I don't wanna deal with taking off my mascara over and over. That will irritate my eyes. So um, yeah, but this is the first look. I know when you look at this palette, it's really easy to be intimidated by it right off the bat because you look at it and you're like, oh my gosh, there's you know, so many bright colors, all these bright blues. How can I make this wearable? And I think Jeffy did a really good job of incorporating enough shades to make the palette more wearable. As you can see, it's pretty easy to create a really toned down, softer look. And um, if that's something you would like to see me do with this palette more, just go ahead and let me know in the comments because I, I know how scary it can be to look at this and just be overwhelmed. I, I do want to show that it is very versatile and you can get all kinds of looks from it, not just bright, in your face, wham bam, blue looks, you know? So if you'd like to see me do more soft looks with this palette, just please let me know and I will get right on it for you. So I'm going to wipe this off and then get started on the next look. All right, so for this look, I wanted it to be a little more extra, like I said. I'm going to take mint tea. I'm going to do like a halo eye. I know. <laughs> so innovative. But yeah, I, what can I say? I love doing halo eyes. I will say some of the lighter shades um, do take some building up, which is usually pretty typical with shades like this. Pastel shades like this just take up more building than others. So I'm gonna take Flourishing, which is a shade here, that's for the dark shade on the inner and outer corners for this halo line. So I'm just placing the color down first and then buffing it out with circular motion. I'm going to take the brush with mint tea on it and use windshield wiper motions to connect this flourishing color a little in the center. I'm going to put cremated on a little pencil brush and tap that on the very outside corner and the very inside. And remember to keep your brush pointed towards the outside of your face, just so that darkness stays um, more on the inner corner and doesn't go into the um, area here in your nose. Okay, using circular motions now to buff that out. And remember when you're buffing it out with your brush to, you can lay it flat against your lid, but always keep the tip pointed towards the inside of your face to keep the darkness away from the um, tear duct area. Taking that brush that has, um, what, that, what color did I use? Flourishing. <laughs> Just to buff out, cremate it a little tiny bit more. Taking the brush with mint tea. I'm gonna take in titles. I'm gonna take it on my finger and if I need to go in with the brush. And just for a little bit of extra dimension, I'm taking the bright white shimmer, Cullen, and I'm gonna pat that right on the center. I'm going to use this same brush just to run Cullen on the brow bone. And then I'm going to take the same brush again, a little bit of Cullen on in the inner corners. And then I'm going to take a tiny bit of Entitled 
and pat that over that shade. I'm gonna go ahead and do the lower lash line real quick. I'm just gonna take flourishing and just run that underneath real quick. Okay, so this is it for the second look, which is a little more out there than the first look, obviously. But yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and do a third look, so I'm gonna wipe this off and then get started on that one. So for this next one, I want to do like a cut crease look and I'm gonna start with Undertaker and I'm gonna put that on a little angled brush. And we're going to use this color to sketch out um, the cut crease. <laughs> so I'm actually going to look forward a little and I'm going to start a line from the outside corner of my crease and take it up to my brow bone and then just run this color through my uh, crease area. So now I'm just going to turn the brush onto its side and start wiggling it back and forth to blend out that Undertaker color. So now I'm going to take Undertaker on a little pointed pencil brush just to um, build it up a little more. Okay, so now that we have that base color down and it's looking all kinds of crazy, I'm going to go in with Blue Monday, which is that really electric color. So when working with pressed pigments, um, since I know a lot of people struggle with them, they work a little different than normal shadows because they um, are obviously more pigment than anything, um, whereas most eyeshadows have filler stuff that makes them easier to blend uh, what it, but those things that make shadows easier to blend can also um, dilute the color a little so pressed pigments most of the time don't have that stuff in it but the way to work with them is to always tap the color down first and then after you've patted the color where you want it that's when you go in and lightly just buff out the edges and this helps the pressed pigment obviously be as pigmented as possible and it helps it from being patchy and stuff too because I've I know a lot of people complain about pressed pigments being patchy um, and the reason why is because like I said they don't have a lot of that filler stuff that makes them easier to blend out so patting the pigment on instead of swiping it helps to fill in those patchy gaps so you get a more even application of color so yeah whenever you see something that's a pressed pigment always be sure to um, pat the color down where you want it first and then buff it out because that allows for the easiest application and the best application so you don't get any of that patchiness so I'm going in with that Undertaker color again, just to deepen it a little tiny bit more. So making sure this um, line here is really deep is um, what I think is the key to getting really sharp cut creases. I know that's a problem that a lot of people have when first when they first start doing cut creases, is that they feel like their cut doesn't look sharp enough. And usually it's just because there's not enough contrast in their look. So you want to make sure that this line here is pretty deep just to um, help your cut creases come out looking a little more sharp. So I think that's as good as it's going to get for now. Let's cut the crease. So as always, I'm taking a large flat synthetic brush and I tap where I want the concealer to go. And then I drag it down. And 
and then I drag it in like a half circle shape. Okay, so to clean up the edge a little bit, I'm taking that angled brush that I used um, to lay down the first line and I'm gonna go around the edge of the concealer. I am gonna take the shade Ice Tray and I'm gonna take it on a flat brush and this will help me get right up to the edge um, of the cut crease. Well, I'm not gonna bring it all the way down to this area because I am going to um, put a wing there. So I didn't realize that my camera had stopped recording, but all I did was take some glitter glue, put it in the shape of a wing, and I used Too Faced glitter glue, and I packed Ocean Ice on top of that. I'm going to go ahead and do it on the other side really quick. Just a little brush like this, and put down the glue in the shape of a wing. So packing an angled brush again with Ocean Ice, which is this shade here. And I would always, or most of the time, use some kind of sticky base or glitter adhesive like I use with this shade because it is like a pressed glitter. So there's going to be a lot of fallout in case you can't tell. Um, and using it with a glitter glue will just help to prevent that fallout. So I'm just taking that brush that I used ice tray with and I'm gonna fill that gap that happened right here. Okay, that's it. Now I'm gonna go in with some liner. Okay, so I'm gonna take this liner and I'm gonna outline the edges here and then bring it up around the top of my crease. Um, hopefully this turns out good. So any place where I go over and it's like kind of wonky, I'm going to take the brush that I used for um, Ocean Ice just to clean up that edge before it dries down. I'm just going to go over one more time to intensify the color. Okay, so I'm going to do the other eye off camera and then I'll be back to finish off the rest of the face. Okay, so I have most of the rest of my face done. Um, I'm going to go in with Frostitute now. So this is my first liquid frost from Jeffree. And um, when I got it, I didn't understand how it worked. So I sat here like twisting it like this because it's like, it's kind of hard to twist past this point right here, um, which is what you're supposed to do. But I didn't understand it. I didn't want to break it. So I just sat here going like, how do you open it? But yeah, you just twist past that hard part and it comes right out. And then of course this part is like a pump. So you can just pump out the product like that. So I'm just gonna take a little bit on the back of my hand first to tap it onto my face. So right off the bat, the formula is a little thinner than most liquid highlight formulas that I've used, which I really like. Um, it's not lifting up the foundation, so like any liquid highlight, a little goes a long way. So if you're doing your face with this, um, you don't need a lot at all. Like even that little drop that I put on my hand is like a little bit too much. I'm going to take this brush now and dip into it and pop a little bit on my inner corners. 
that blends out real nicely with the brush as well. I think I'm also going to apply a little bit on my chest. Oh, I'm just going to take it and apply it directly onto my collarbone. Just a little. Oh, I think that's too much. <laughs> so I'm going to take that little extra glob that was here and put a little on my shoulders here and a little here. Okay, now I'm going to use a um, old kabuki brush that I have and I'm going to use circular motions just to buff that in. As you can see, it just gives a really nice little sheen. Um, you can also build these up. I've played with it a little already. And you can stay building these up to get a more intense color. But obviously most people don't want a super intense blue highlight all over themselves. So this nice little um, sheen is enough for me. Super pretty. Okay, so to finish the lower lash line, I go ahead and take I'm Cold and a fluffy angled brush and run that underneath the lash line. So now I'm just going to take that little pointed brush that I used earlier and I'm going to take, I think I'm just going to take Blue Blood and run that on the outer half. Okay, I'm going to take I'm Cold and um, put that on my brow bone. Okay, now I'm going to take the angled brush from earlier, the one that we've been using for like everything, and a little bit of cremated and just running that on the outer um, third. Okay, I'm going to take the brush that we used to apply um, Prostitute. I'm picking up that white shade um, Cullinan and tapping that right over Prostitute. I'm going to pop on some lashes and a lip and be back to talk about what I think about Blue Bud. Okay, so this is the final look. I feel very um, doll-like, like a brat doll almost, <laughs> with this look. Um, but anyway, back to the important thing, blue blood. Um, I'm sure you already guessed that <laughs> I really adore this palette. Blue is my favorite color, um, so of course as soon as I saw that Jeffrey was releasing this palette, I was like... <laughs> Did he make it just for me? Because it sure does feel like it. Um, it's stunning, amazing, fantastic. The colors are vibrant, pigmented, and very easily blendable. Um, sometimes, like I said earlier, it, it can be kind of bad for a shadow to be too blendable in my opinion. Just because, like I said earlier, it can um, blend away easier so it looks like you didn't even put the shadow down to begin with. But um, other than that, it's, uh, perfection, like, we just gotta look at it one more time, like, oh my god, <laughs> I want my casket to look like when I die, it, it, I want it to be a replica, replication of the Blue Blood palette. Um, for the Skin Frost, I really like the formula, like I said, it's a little watery, a little more watery than previous um, liquid highlights that I've used, which I actually really like. I think that makes it easier to blend into things like your lotion or moisturizer or anything like that, just to give that nice kind of wash of glitter, because it is like glitter particles in the highlight, which normally I tend to stay away from um, on my face, but the glitter is so fine that it's not really that big of a deal and it gives a really nice glow if you ask me and i also think that it's also very wearable lots of people were um skeptical of these highlighters saying well they're too blue who's gonna wear a blue highlight i'm not a smurf that's not gonna look good on me but like i said it shears down really nicely 
I wish I would have gotten the other shades um, to test those out. But it cheered out really nicely and it just leaves like the subtle hint of like a blue green, um, which in my opinion is totally wearable. Obviously not everyone's gonna feel that way, but for me, this shade is very wearable and I love it. It's gonna be perfect for those summer days, hanging out by the pool, looking like a mermaid with my skin glistening. So yeah, that's it. If you haven't picked up the Blue Blood palette, but would like to, Jeffrey has mentioned that he's going to be doing a restock sometime in May. So be sure to keep your eyes peeled for it. Pick it up if you can, cause it's a stunner. And that's it. Um, don't forget to comment, like, and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching. Uh, hope to see you in the next one. Bye.